Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's time for another humble book bundle. I was just working on some more delicious Linux DevOps programming videos uh, for you guys and saw the newest book bundle, um, an ebook bundle consisting of purely, well, mostly functional programming books. If you're not familiar with functional programming, it's kind of a different way of looking at programming and programming problems um, based around functions, based around mutating your state less, sort of having less state changing all over the place in your program, which can make things much easier to debug, um, can make some things much more like tersely, powerfully expressed. It's just an interesting kind of, uh, I wouldn't say like tool to add to your toolbox. It's more of like a mindset to learn that you can use on certain problems. Um, so let's get to the meat of this. Um, there are a ton of books, hundreds of dollars worth. If you use the uh, the partner link that I've got in the description of this video, you'll be helping me out. And uh, well, you'll primarily be helping yourself out because this is a pretty, pretty sweet bundle. Um, first off, uh, Living Closure um, is one of the books that I taught myself Closure with. Actually, nope, sorry. It's Closure Programming, my bad. We get to that later, I lied, all right. Uh, anyway, Closure, an amazing functional language. Both Closure and Scala uh, are built on the JVM, on the Java uh, kind of like VM and ecosystem so you can interact with Java libraries. Um, so you have a huge ecosystem to draw on. But they are different languages with different syntax and different kind of programming, a different way of thinking about programming. Closure is super interesting. It's a Lisp. If you're inter interested in learning a Lisp, um, it is an amazing experience. It will change how you program forever. Um, I don't regret any of the months that I poured into this without ever getting a job in Closure or any other Lisp. It has made me a better programmer and, you know, I, I highly encourage you to try a Lisp. Closure is a great one to start with. Um, Scala is another really interesting language. Um, it's actually, I work at a machine learning company and they use a lot of Scala internally for many of those reasons. Like it, let, it lets you leverage a lot of Java libraries and tools while not tying you to, you know, building a huge, horrendous, object-oriented mess um, over time. You can use this kind of functional programming uh, mindset to keep something a little bit more maintainable, a little bit um, more terse and powerful. Here's one that I'm really interested in. So Erlang is this language that's been around since the 70s, and recently it's been repopularized by uh, companies like WhatsApp, using it. It was kind of this boring telecom language and now suddenly people are interested in using it because uh, you know WhatsApp built this huge system on it. Elixir, like Clojure and Scala being implemented in Java, sort of on the JVM, Elixir is a language that is a its own language but built on the Erlang VM. Elixir is really interesting. I think if you're a kind of like intermediate programmer, you've learned a couple languages, you've tried some stuff, you've written some larger programs. This is an interesting time to try Elixir because I get the sense that Elixir is at the point now where a lot of very, very smart, interesting people with smart, interesting project ideas are adopting it for doing real work with. So there's a web framework for Elixir called Phoenix and I, around those things, I've seen a lot of the same buzz that we saw like 10 years ago, or I guess more now, oof, around Ruby on Rails before that became huge. Elixir and Phoenix are an interesting combination. Elixir is basically a functional language built on Erlang, but it looks and feels a lot more like, I don't know, Python or Ruby or one of those things. I guess a little more like Python. It's a little more rigid, but it's functional. It's got all these super powerful functional tools that you can use, ways of thinking, and it's built on the Erlang VM, which has some interesting properties around scaling, around hot code reloading, um, all kinds of very interesting things that you can just use. You can just tap into all those things that are built for you. So if you're interested in getting into web development, maybe, um, and you're thinking, like, oh, should I learn like Python and Django? Should I learn Ruby on Rails? What do I do? Maybe consider Elixir and Phoenix because, again, nothing's sure in this industry, but that could put you way ahead of the curve in a couple of years when this thing blows up, if it blows up. Okay, some more closure stuff. Scala, eh, Haskell. Um, I recommended another ebook bundle a few months ago that was also about functional programming, and it, it featured um, the book Learn You a Haskell for Great Good, which I think is maybe the Haskell book 
to start with. I'm not a huge Haskell programmer. That's sort of the opinion that I've heard from people I trust. So there it is if you want. If you've got no Haskell and you want some Haskell and maybe you can't learn it for great good yet, maybe real world Haskell will do. JavaScript, uh, enough said. Closure. No, I don't mean to be an elitist. I just, <laughs> if you're getting into like uh, front end development or writing a bunch of websites and you want to get more into the front end side, then you absolutely have to understand JavaScript. This book is a little bit older. Um, it's probably still worth reading. I think underscore has largely been supplanted by Lodash, which is another functional JavaScript library, but the concepts are probably the same, so probably still worth checking out. Okay, see, I'm not an elitist pig. There you go. Okay, Closure Programming. This is the bad boy that I started with. I love this book. Um, it introduced me to Closure. I remember many fun months working through it. Um, yeah, super awesome. There's one more thing that I want to kind of get to in this video, and that is Rust. This is kind of an interesting one to see in here. This is an almost brand new book, Programming Rust. It is written by some people that have some very interesting credentials. Rust itself is a super interesting language. It is new. You can think of it almost like an improved C. It's compiled, safe. The, the, the focus is on safety. Um, so a lot of the worst security bugs that we have are because all of our large systems seem to be written in C. And there are some bugs that you can have in C that even very smart programmers make that are very hard to find or track down easily. And often, when you have Linux kernel vulnerabilities come from this, well, a lot of Windows vulnerabilities come from this, a lot of the vulnerabilities in the, our core infrastructure and stuff come from problems that Rust actually doesn't allow you to make. Um, those problems actually, the, the goal is that you, they can't happen with Rust certain for certain types of errors, for certain types of problems, um, primarily around like memory and like referencing things that don't exist anymore, etc. So if you're interested in systems development, building an operating system, building some kind of real time system that has to be extremely fast and also safe, uh, Rust is super interesting. One example of this is Redox OS. Um, it is a Unix-like OS built from scratch in Rust. So this is like a super interesting project. It's actually gotten way further off the ground than I thought it would, much faster. Um, it's really active on GitHub. Um, you can see all these interesting features that it's got. Um, just as an example of interesting things people are doing with Rust, people are doing all kinds of interesting things. I just think this is a nice big honking project that you can just go look at and just read through. That said, as always, I appreciate uh, you buying this thing through the uh, partner link that helps me out. But obviously, as always, I wouldn't recommend this stuff if I didn't freaking love it. So there you go. Enjoy the humble ebook bundle of functional programming books. Uh, let me know which ones are your favorites or which languages you're interested in learning uh, in the comments. And maybe I'll do a tiny little tutorial, um, which will force me to have to <laughs> relearn some of this. Um, all right, guys. I hope you have fun with these. I will see you very soon in a very cool video that I'm working on right now. Peace.